Many of you have certainly, I think that some of you, not many, but some of you have certainly experienced acute appendicitis in the life or some other infections that have been treated successfully with antibiotics and antimicrobials. And indeed, in the first 15 years of use, antimicrobials have improved the health and lives of, Western, of mostly Western countries more than all other medical technologies over the last 50 years. These drugs have been called miracle drugs, of course. But now we have to think that uh, this miracle is tragically ending. The, U uh, the, the WHO estimates that 2 million of illness and 23,000 deaths each year will occur only in the US due to antimicrobial resistance, due to AMR, due to the fact that bacteria and infective pathogens have become completely resistant to any kind of antibiotic class or drugs available on the market. The perfect storm in this sense is really approaching. The O'Neill's report in 2000, commissioned by David Cameron, the former UK Prime Minister, explains and foresees that by the year 2000, and 50, 10 million deaths will occur across the world due to this kind of situation. 4 million in Asia, around 4 million in Africa, more than the foreseen 8 million deaths due to cancer across the world. I think that the, the, most, the simplest way to understand what it does mean is that the whole building of the modern medicine and progress of medicine relies on the fact of having drugs to treat infections. Because even the simplest infection, your acute appendicitis, will become completely untreatable in 10 to 15 years if we don't do something to reverse this trend. And you can forget all the medical progress we were talking about. Complex surgery, solid organ or bone marrow transplantation, intensive care unit treatment for critically ill patients. All of these situations will become untreatable because of the lack of effective antibiotic to treat infection. But I will not go through the classical medical and boring uh, topic of antimicrobial resistance in the hospitals and uh, the way to prevent that uh, through the infection control and prevention practices. I just wish to show you that antimicrobial resistance is everywhere. In any kind of situation, you can imagine your life. And in this kind of situation, there are three major actors playing. The humans, the animals, and the environment. There are some chemical sequences called uh, antimicrobial resistance genes that have been found intrinsically in any environment and can be easily acquired by environmental bacteria. Almost any natural environment can be considered polluted by this ARG. Some of them are constitutive in the environment itself and some others are originated and propagated by human activities or animal activities. And you can, right now, 
start understanding why it happens. Any activity is interplayed with others. And bacteria may share their genomes and their genes. Through this kind of communication, for example, there are some plasmids that are sequences of genes that can be exchanged from one strain of bacteria to another. And it, may, it, it means that you can confer a, a kind of resistance to one strain of bacteria to another. And in the, the lower part of the slide, you, you can start thinking how the food chain, for example, can represent a threat also for our health from the animals to the food chain to humans. This uh, intensive farming is one of the most important ways to make resistance emerge and spread. But this is not the only one. There are many different mechanisms that can be shared through animals and then the bacteria through the administration of uh, antibiotics to animals for growth purposes mostly. For example, back the animals' bacteria, the microbiota of animals become resistant to the antibiotics. Bacteria travel on meat and we eat these meat that may cause, in a second time, hard to treat illnesses. Likely, most of you like sushi and raw fish also. And consider that uh, China in 2014 produced over 45 million metric tons of fish, crustaceans and mollusks in aquaculture for Western countries. And uh, these mollusks and fishes and crustaceans are fed with a food that contains the MCR gene that can be acquired from the aquatic bacteria to the microbiota of fish and crustaceans. And the MCR gene is the gene that confers resistance to colistin, which is the last antibiotics we have on the chain before dying. But I would like to highlight that the environment plays exactly a, a, a major role, and we play a major role in the environment. We have to feel responsible on what we are doing and what we do with the environment. It's clear that MDR, the multidrug resistant bacteria, do not need passport to cross country borders. It is quite clear, I think, because mostly of our activities and the biocides and metals and the genes I've told previously. There's a one element which is crucial, the water, because any kind of activity have water inside. Any kind of thing you can think about or think you can think about requires water. And if you think that water can be a the biggest reservoir for genes of antimicrobial resistance, you can also easily think how such conditions can be really a threat for the spread of antimicrobial resistance genes and to, to tackle antimicrobial resistance in, in these cases can be quite tough and demanding. There are some international programs led by international organizations such as the WHO that have launched a program called the WASH, Water, Sanitation and Hygiene, because sanitation and hygiene in such conditions is the first step to help these people tackle antimicrobial resistance and very dangerous infection that we have completely forgot but that can be really a threat in the next 10 to 15 years. 
Water plays a major role in this sense also for this. Maybe you are not aware of. I put this head of the book, uh, The Rising Global Threat of Air Pollution, because uh, it's about the threat of air pollution all around the world and states that more than 90% of the world population is exposed to air pollution concentration that exceed the WHO guidelines about that. But the Beijing smog contains antimicrobial resistance genes that are quite similar to those found in the gastrointestinal and urogenital tract of humans, in sediment, in water, in soil and mines. And wastewater and rain clears the smoke from Beijing or from any other town or city in the world and, are, and is collected also for leisure purposes such as the artificial snow for slope. When you go skiing on artificial snow in the Dolomites, for example, in my region, you can also breathe, you can also smell, eventually, some antimicrobial resistance genes that have been collected by the water in the basins. You are not aware of that, I'm sure. <laughs> So, from this data, it's clear that uh, the vision is completely turning. We have, we grew with the idea that uh, antimicrobials were miracles for our life. And uh, I think that uh, they were, indeed. But we were not, and we have to start thinking about that, the research is quite uh, slow and the MDA do not passport to cross the country borders, as we have seen. In this respect, we have to think that uh, we have one word, one medicine in general, and one health. And, one, and when a part of this word, of this entity, gets sick, all the other organs, all the other parts of this one word will suffer. And it can be humans, they can be animals, they can be lakes, water, or whatsoever you can think about. So, be prepared and now is the time, isn't it? I don't want to be catastrophic because it, that's not the sense, but the message could be that anyone should be responsible for his or her own part of responsibility to take care of this world. Public awareness must be a priority. Sanitation and hygiene in 70% of the, of the world should be also. A wise use of antibiotics, mostly in the veterinarian medicine, for example, that represent 80% of consumption of antibiotics all around the world, and 20% is for humans. Vaccines. Vaccines represent a really important weapon against antimicrobial resistance. If you get vaccinated for a viral infection, you, are, you lower 60% the risk of a bacterial sovereign infection. And that means that you will spare the antibiotics required for the bacterial infection consequent to the viral infection for an illness you will not get you would not get if you would have been vaccinated. Human capital, this is one of the most important investment. Investment of brains, investment of souls, investment of anything you can imagine because we have all to go in the same direction and forward 
for this medicine, for our health, and for our unique world we still have. Thank you very much. Thank you.